Here we are back on the screen, and we're, we're going to be continuing talking with Thomas Harding, a neuropsychologist who has just opened a clinic here in Maui called the Memory Clinic. And so in this book that I have out, we have some brain games that were created for brain-injured folks uh, by my mentor, by the way, Dr. James Crane, who was a World War II veteran. Um, he developed the first uh, brain training rehabilitation program back in the 70s right here in Hawaii at State Hospital. And um, one of the things he made me promise before he passed away was to get his information in book form and get it out to people's hands. So I just wanted to do a quick shout out there to Dr. Crane. These, these games in here, he, he created them himself and they're time tested. I've worked with lots of uh, brain injured folks and demented folks, or I should say MCI folks to uh, help reverse. Mild cognitive it. impairment, MCI. Yes, mild cognitive impairment. And that's, it's, it's, and it's a fine line between a senior moment and what's MCI. And, and the easiest or the best way to describe that is uh, a senior moment that's happening more frequently. Most likely you were looking at mild cognitive impairment. Yes. So freak, how would you say more than five episodes a day? I mean, there's a... Oh, gosh, yeah. If you're having more than one a day, something's going on. It's not normal to be 60 and, and walk into a room and forget why you're in there more than once a day. Uh, no, if you're in your 70s and 80s and, you're, and you forget why you walked into a room, well, you get to because you're 75 and 80 and <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what day pass, it is probably. Pass. Thumbs up, pass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, if, but see, the thing that is, I think, that happens to people is they worry. And so worry can really throw you a loop. And I think that, that this is a key I want to really emphasize with people who are listening and their family members if you're worried and thinking about it and worrying about it, thinking something's going on, then that's the time to call you. Be it's proactive. Be I mean, proactive, exactly. Worrying about it will change nothing. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so many people worry and then they don't take the next step of getting on the phone. And unfortunately here in Maui, there hasn't been anyone like me to uh, to do this for um, the senior group. I mean, over on Oahu, um, I train a lot of doctoral students in what I do over there. So they've got quite a few folks that can help. Over here in Maui, it's kind of like, wow, there's, there's nothing going on over here. So folks don't know that you can do something about it. And so what we're trying to do is get the word out and let them know that it's yes you can today you can come in you can be seen we can we can put that worry aside <laughs> or we can go no you've, you've it's a good now thing you're, gonna you're concerned start, we're going to have you start this and do this and do yes. this we'll give you a treatment care. absolutely yes and that's what's really important and, you, and if you are mca you're probably going to get to meet dr blake because he's going to change your nutrition your diet exactly well yeah. we heard he was here talking about uh the nutrition aspect of the, the, the testing of the the plan or not the plan but the the whole research project yes and how positive that was and i think what if i remember correctly remembered um that his that some of the people were already in mild cognitive impairment so that was one of the criteria that we were looking for so we did the neuropsych testing the cognitive testing to determine where they're at i mean if you're already if you're still normal and healthy we, you know you, you're not going to see much of a difference so we're looking for people that were at mild cognitive impairment level those are the folks that we put into the test itself into and the project into the supplements and they were the ones taking the diets. supplements changing their diets absolutely now how many times a day i forget now how many times a day you need to take was it three or four a day you're talking about Dr. Blake's brain and body food? It's six. And so I, I like to break it up. I take two in the morning, two at lunch, two in the evening. Okay. So if you're a busy person, three in the morning, three in the evening, but as long as you get your six in there. Six. So I think that's a really important thing. And it's good to hear that you're working together. It makes perfect fit. It's a great fit actually. for us. So especially if you're trying to prevent, I mean, nutritional aspects, a big piece. It really is because our food supply is just polluted. And so he'll help you get on the right track. And organic, it sounds more like. And it. organic, he, yeah. He is, Catherine has some great recipes. Yes. What can I tell you? <laughs> Many people, as baby boomers are aging and we're all part of this group, I don't think he is, but I certainly am. And... Um, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking about our parents that might have had some dementia or friends or aunts or uncles. And one thing I think that pops up for people is, will I get dementia because my mother had it, my father, my great uncle, and then his son had Alzheimer's. Am I, am I at, at risk? So we're talking about the genetic factor. 
And yeah, you're at risk, but that doesn't mean you're going to get it. Um, they just recently did. So in, every July, they have the Alzheimer's Association International Conference, and they just finished it up uh, a couple of weeks ago over in L.A. And one of the biggest things that came out of that is dementia incidents reduced in people with high risk genetics. And what that means, so they, they did, they looked at the UK biobank of about 193,000 older adults. I mean, this is a big meta study. And they looked at people with high genetic risk, like they may have the ApoE4 gene. So if, if, if you have that, you're gonna produce more plaque in your brain. Well, does that mean I'm gonna get Alzheimer's? Well, so what they did was they took two groups of people with a, with a high gene load. And one of them, they made sure they had a healthy lifestyle, like they stimulated their brain, they ate right, they exercised to get blood to their brain. The other group, they just let them stay normal, that's your control, couch potato, eating whatever they want to eat, right? And they found a 32% lower um, risk in folks that had the healthy lifestyle versus the folks with the unhealthy lifestyle. So and these were all people with the genetic risk. This is all folks with this the genetic This is really important risk. research. It is. So if you're worried about, you know, what can I do? You, there's absolutely, well, there's a lot you can do. You can, you can live that healthy lifestyle. You can change your diet. You can stimulate your brain. You can start walking around a block at the end of the day before you sit on the couch. I mean, there's lots of things we can do to, even with, uh, with bad genes, if you will. So, yeah, that's, that is ex excellent news. It's not, you don't have to be fatalistic in your thinking anymore. Because I know people used to, I remember uh, the Alzheimer's Society in Sacramento, mm -hmm. they had a family, this was a highly unusual, a family in Lodi, I believe it was, five siblings all had Alzheimer's wow. in their 50s. I mean, they were... They, so that's early onset. That's, that's definitely genetic. And, okay, so there we go. So that if you're in your 50s or you're younger then you're, it's, it's not a good outcome you're looking at Well, and so, Alzheimer's. And we're talking about 50s. Any, any kind of brain problems in the 50s is not good. I mean, it could be frontal temporal. It could be Lewy body. It could be a number of things. So, yeah, you should come in and get checked. If you're in your mid to late 50s and, you know, you've noticed some changes, don't wait. Come in, take it. We'll see what it is. And this is why we want to know your medical history. Anybody in your family have frontal temporal dementia or Lewy body or Parkinson's or things of this Nature. Oh, Parkinson's, yeah. So in your book, mm -hmm. you can prevent Alzheimer's. This yes. is a very good book. You want to be able to look at it. There's some what? There's uh, screens for your memory. There's games to play. Yes, there's a bunch of games in here. There's a risk factor profile. So if you don't you know... You have that online too. Yeah, so if you go to the website, you'll see um, a whole bunch of risk factors. And there's even a visual memory screen that you can take. And if you don't do too good on that, uh, you need to come in and see what's going on. And the risk profile... It's in the book. It's like a survey that you take, and it, it asks you, do you have this in your life? Do you have that in your life? And you score it at the end, and you find out if you're high risk or low risk or somewhere in the middle. But you can kind of find out just from that risk profile. Why don't you tell us your website again? It's www.be-dementia-free.com. Yes. B, okay, www.b, b e Dementia, D E M E N T I A, mm -hmm. free, F R E E dot com. Be dementia free. Yes. Which is, of course, a goal. We all have that goal. Should we just give them a phone number to the give clinic? Them, give them a phone number for the clinic. So yes. the clinic's phone number is 808, of course, is 244 1007. That's 244 1007. You can call and we can start you um, on, with an appointment and start collecting your medical records to see what's going on. I think that's a great idea and it's a wonderful resource in the community. I know oh. that, well, one thing we were talking about earlier is SAC is uh, Maui County with the Office on Aging have such benefit and programs for seniors. The Kapuna in Maui are so lucky. And having come from Sacramento, the capital of California, I can tell you, head and shoulders above in Maui. Maui. Maui's got the Maui Office on Aging. They've got great people over there. And uh, Maui County is, uh, I guess, wealthy compared to some places. And they have quite a few resources that they allocate for the seniors here. I don't know if we're wealthy or they just prioritize it. Well, you know what happens is every possibility that comes along that has money, research, uh, Deb, 
Stonewalls, mm -hmm. who is the executive on aging in the county of Maui, is very open and excited about trying new things. So if something's available and it's a national program, it's a statewide program, she said, why not? Let's try it. And her staff are always mm -hmm. so enthusiastic. You yeah, know, I know Deborah well. In fact, she's over on the mainland right now attending a conference, so she stays on top of everything. She's yeah. a great person. She's really amazing. So anyways, um, what about, you know, I, re I remember once my mother who had dementia um, was driving, and of course my brother's in the car who doesn't drive, doesn't know anything about which one-way streets or whatever in Sacramento, mm. and he was giving her directions because he walks or takes the bus down a one-way street anyway so the, the question about and she's listening to him she's listening to him yeah and so anyway needless to say she had to do a bang a yui as we used to say and get going on the right side of the street but um what about if you're you have a parent that you see shouldn't be driving and that's a pretty touchy subject getting your parents to not drive if you're they're really having memory yeah, loss. yeah and you know if you think about it we are children in our parents eyes forever uh, my my mother sees me as a little 12 year old boy she doesn't see a doctor I'll give you a great example I was over in Oahu I was about to see my next patient and this he was about six foot six he was a police officer still had his uniform on he filled that door frame and behind him was his little old mom and he brought her in to have her tested because he didn't think she could drive well she won't listen to him he i mean what does he know he's only a big old cop right right exactly so i tested her and sure enough i said yeah ma'am i really think you should quit driving and as soon as i said that he said you see mom i told you to quit driving. <laughs> but but they don't listen to us so you if you come nice in to get a third party verification bring in <laughs> bring them into the doctor let the doctor be the bad guy so you can salvage your relationship with your parents don't you don't want to try to win that battle let let us do that for you <laughs> yeah i mean that's a parent i mean somehow having your license taken is a very well it's it's your independence your, it's your independence and yeah. everybody prides themselves on being able to take care of themselves mostly and you know that's i've i've seen a lot of senior drivers come in and go i'm a great driver i've been driving great all my life no no problems and i do a driving um a senior safety driving uh, presentation and, and the, there's this little old lady her car's on its tail end uh, beside a tree and there's a cop she's having to talk to and i'm going if you to ask her five minutes before she put that car in the tree she'd say i'm a good driver and we all think we're great drivers. And it's just, you know, as we age, it changes slowly. And before you know it, your processing speed slower, your reaction time, you're not hitting those brakes as fast, uh, your useful field of vision. So when you come in, we do testing and we can check your vision to see how far out you're seeing your peripheral and your process, your visual processing speed. Can you hit those brakes in time or are you going to go up someone's rear end? Now, uh, how long does the, the value, how long do you take per patient? So a senior typically, you know, they can't sit forever in the old days you would do eight hours and no one can do that and the insurance won't cover that but we typically take about three hours you all know. at one sitting or do they come back well we usually can do a, a good interview and then we'll do about two and a half hours of testing so that they need to be there for three but we'll take that information and we'll score it, interpret it write a report and we'll have them come back the following uh, week or so and go over these test results and have real heart-to-heart -heart conversations like yeah this this here showing your multitasking is not happening and your psychomotor speed, you know, you really are a danger to the road. In fact, I want to know where you live and what you're driving so I can stay away from you. <laughs> yeah, so the AARP, they do have a group of volunteers that will come around and help with the conversation. So you don't have to do this alone. So after I've given the testing and it shows that it's bad, and I'll put that in my report, and one of the, rec one of the um, referrals we'll make will include AARP's information so that they too can jump on board and go, you know, you really need to stop and think about not driving anymore and it's it's a tough thing to do i mean you think about your own life i mean you, you know you just jump in the car and go it's, we're independent we're americans and we're talk, we're asking people to give that up and it's it's it doesn't happen overnight sometimes it, you take a away tough road to hoe that's all i can say sometimes you take away the keys sometimes you disconnect the battery the wheels might go missing you know <laughs>